Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the first and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 8, Acids and Bases, where we will be looking at the Bronsted-Lowry theory, acids, bases, pH, Kw, and acid deposition. You should already be familiar with the existence of acids and bases from your IGCSE or MYP knowledge. However, they are formally defined under the Bronsted-Lowry theory. An acid is defined as a proton donor, i.e. a species which dissociates to produce H plus ions. We can express a pure acid's dissociation by the following equation, where the acid HA donates a proton to form A minus. However, acids are normally diluted with water, so a more representative equation would be HA plus H2O goes to H3O plus plus A minus. A base, i.e. alkali, is defined as a proton acceptor, i.e. a species which dissociates to produce OH minus ions. Since bases must accept a proton, their dissociation equations are always written to include water, as B plus H2O goes to BH plus plus OH minus. When discussing the Bronsted-Lowry definitions, two related terms are often used, conjugate acids and conjugate bases. A conjugate acid and base are simply a pair of molecules which differ from one another by a single H+. So, revisiting our two previous equations, we can say, for the acid HA, its conjugate base is A-. Thus, H2O can be considered a base, with a conjugate acid of H3O+. For the base B, its conjugate acid is BH+. Thus, H2O can be considered an acid, with a conjugate base of OH-. Therefore, we can see that water is acting as both an acid and a base across these examples. The term for a species which can act as both an acid and a base is amphoteric. A similar term is amphiprotic, a species which can either donate or accept a proton, which also describes water in this context. A common example of an amphoteric and amphiprotic substance is HCO3-. This can act as an acid, donating a proton, dissociating to form the conjugate base CO3-2-. However, it can also act as a conjugate base, accepting a proton to form the acid H2CO3. So, we've defined acids and bases, but you need some more information on each. Let's look at acids. Acids can be classified as either strong or weak. Strong acids dissociate fully in aqueous solution. So, reviewing the equation we created earlier, we can replace the reversible arrow with a single arrow. This indicates that the position of equilibrium lies so far to the right that the reaction is essentially considered non-reversible. Strong acids are therefore considered to have a weak conjugate base, as it will not readily pick up protons to reform the acid. Common strong acids include HCl, H2SO4 and HNO3. Weak acids dissociate partially in aqueous solution, so are expressed using the equation we created earlier, i.e. using a reversible arrow. Here the position of equilibrium does not lie far to the right, but is found further left, the extent of which varies based on the acid. Weak acids are therefore considered to have a strong conjugate base, as it will readily pick up protons to reform the acid. Common weak acids include CH3COOH and H2CO3. A unique example worth discussing is sulfuric acid, H2SO4, which is considered a diprotic acid, i.e. it has two protons available and so can dissociate twice. During its first association, it acts as a strong acid to form the weak conjugate base HSO4-, but during the second association, this acts as a weak acid to form the strong conjugate base, SO4-. All acids undergo three common reactions that you need to recall. Acid plus carbonate goes to salt plus water plus CO2. An example would be HCl plus NaCO3 going to NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Acid plus metals goes to salt plus hydrogen. Note this only applies to metals above hydrogen in the reactivity series found on table 25 of your data booklet. An example would be HCl plus Na goes to NaCl plus H2O. And acid plus base goes to salt plus water, called neutralization reactions, which are always exothermic. The types of bases you will encounter for these reactions are hydroxides, metal oxides, and ammonia. 
An example for each would be HCl plus NaOH goes to NaCl plus H2O. 2HCl plus CuO goes to CuCl2 plus H2O. And HCl plus NH3 goes to NH4Cl. Note that ammonia in this last equation is an exception, as it does not form water. All these reactions are covered during titration reactions, covered in depth in our higher level IB Chemistry Topic 18 video series. We use HCl for simplicity's sake in all three of these reactions, but any acid could be used, and depending on the acid, different salts are produced. You need to recall the common salts formed. Chloric acids form chloride salts, nitric acids form nitrate salts, sulfuric acids form sulfates, and ethanoic acid forms ethanoate. So, you understand strong or weak acids, but how do we tell which is which? Well, strong acids react more vigorously in the above reactions, and so produce more gas, i.e. bubbles. Since they also fully dissociate, they produce a higher concentration of H plus ions in solution, and so will conduct electricity more readily when compared to weak acids. But what about bases? Just like acids, bases can be defined as strong or weak. Strong bases dissociate fully in aqueous solution. They commonly take the form of group 1 hydroxides, for example sodium hydroxide. Just like acids, reviewing the equation we created earlier, we can replace the reversible arrow with a single arrow, as equilibrium lies so far to the right. Similarly, strong bases have a weak conjugate acid. Common strong bases include NaOH and KOH. Weak bases dissociate partially in aqueous solution, so are expressed using the equation we created earlier, i.e. using a reversible arrow. Similarly, the position of equilibrium does not lie far to the right and varies based on the base. Weak bases also have a strong conjugate acid. Common weak bases include NH3 and CH3NH2. But how can we chemically differentiate acids from bases? You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.